Hello. In this section, we're going to introduce what is logarithm function. So logarithm function basically is the undo of exponential function. What does that mean, undo an exponential function? Well, if you're starting to solve an equation, 4 times x equals to 8, how do you solve for x? Well, 4 and x are multiplication, right? So to undo the multiplication, we need to divide the 4. We use division to undo the multiplication. So x is equal to 2. So if we're trying to, uh, let's say, x minus a equals to 10, so this is subtraction. We want to undo the subtraction. We will use addition. So x is equal to 18. So logarithm function is the same. If I have e to the x equals to, let's not use, use e to the x, let's use a concrete number, 4 to the x equals to 16, of course, you know the answer. It's equal to 2 because you know 4 squared equals to um, 16. But what if I have some weird number, like 24? How do you know the answer of 24? That's why we need to use a logarithm function to undo the exponential. Which means, logarithm function is written in the form of log of x. So the base is going to write it on the upper right. So the base should remain the same. So here's the base. So this is the base. And then you swap these two. So log base 4 of 24 equals to x. So see, that's how we solve for x. It's a logarithm function. Well, when you type in this in a calculator, it will give you an exact number. Okay, so now let me give you more examples and let's try to practice how to convert exponential function to logarithm function and verse wise. So now I'm giving you some exponential function, um, such as a to the x equals to 25 and Practice this by yourself, and then we'll check the answer together. Um, and uh, let's have some letters. A to the A equals to B. I want you to solve for A. And the next one is negative 4 to the 10, no, to the X. To the K equals to Y. Again, solve okay okay we want to rewrite these into a logarithm function so that means we have the log and then what's the base the base is the same it's 8 so here is 8 and we swap the position x and 25 so now we have log base 8 of 25 equals to x so similar to here the base is 8 in here, and then we swap B and A. B and A. When you swap it, remember you undo it. So when you undo exponential function, you need to write it as a logarithm function. Let's do again. Log. This is base is a negative number to what? Y equals to K. Now it's the opposite. If I give them you log um, 4 to the 16, well, we use so many 4 and 16. Let's use another one. 5 to the 25, I want you to evaluate what does this equals to. How do you do that? Well, we're trying to solve this equation. We don't know, so we can write it as x, right? And then we can write it into a exponential function so now i have the base five the base should remain the same and then i swap these two now is x five to the x power equals to 25 so x equals to what two right so that means log base five of 25 equals to 2. Okay. 
Um, so after these, I want to introduce you to special log. One is called common log. So common log is a logarithm function with the base 10. We have written as log of x. So that means if they write it as log base 10 of x, we usually just write it as log of x. If you don't see the base, that means the default base is going to be 10. And another log is a natural log, which is a logarithm function with a base of e. Remember what's e from the exponential function? The continuous growth e is a natural number which is approximately equals 2.718 something just like our pi is a constant our pi is approximately equals to 3.15 so e is just a constant number represent 2.18 and then we write it as log base e to the x we write it as ln to the x so that means it's so now, examples. If there's a log 1000, and I want you to solve this and figure out does, what does this equal to. How do you do it? So remember that since they don't give you the base, right? So that means the default base is 10. You can let this whole function equals to some unknown variable x. Now we can rewrite this. To solve a log, you can rewrite it into an exponential function. Just remember that the log and exponential function relationship is like addition and the subtraction. They can undo each other, like multiplication and division. They can undo each other. So I have a base 10, and then I swap this two to the x equals to 1,000. So that means x equals to 3, because 10 to the 3th power, 10 cubed, is equal to 1,000. So that means log of 1,000 equals to 3. So now I would like to take a look at of the graph. What does the logarithm function graph look like? Okay, so here is our decimals. Okay. So first is, we want to know what does log x look like. So this is log of x. We are trying to find what do they have in common. So another thing is, what if I want to type in log base 2 to the x. So in GeoGebra, you need to type in the x first and then the base later. You use a parenthesis to represent that. So I have a log top is x, the base is 2, so the purple line. And now, similarly, if you want to find the graph of log base of 11 to the x, so the function is going to look like log base to the x, and then the base is 11, so the black one. And let's do another one. So log base of 4.5, a fractional number, or 0.4. Okay, so the function all look like this way, right? Going up and on the right side of the graph. So basically, the function look like this one, correct? And they all pass in this point, 1, 0. This is important. Remember that they pass in one zero. And do you see there's an asymptote? Yes, there is a vertical asymptote which is y axis, right? Remember the asymptote in exponential function is going to be x axis. So let's look at a basic exponential function such as y equals to a to the x. Look, the blue one, the blue line with the asymptote of xxx, whereas all of the logarithm function with the asymptote 
y axis. Okay, after we explore all of the positive number, now let's take a look at the negative number. I am going to mill some of this one. The log of x negative 2 going down. And now if I have another one, um, negative 9 also going down. They also pass the point what? 1, 0. So if we put all of this back, what happened? They all pass the point 1, 0. But if the base is a positive number, the function going up is an increasing function. If it's a negative base, the function going down. Correct? And also, all of these functions, they have one thing in common. Is what? They are all on the right side of the coordinate, which means the domain x has always to be positive. And that they all have a vertical asymptote, which is y-axis. Okay, let me summarize these things. Yeah. So for a logarithm function, the graph of logarithm function it's going to be what? They always have a, all of the function, the graph has a horizontal intercept at one zero. Remember that all of the function, no matter the increasing or decreasing, they all pass this point. Right, one zero. And what else? The graph also, no matter the increasing or decreasing, the graph has a vertical asymptote, which is the y axis y-axis is when x equals to zero that's a vertical line and the, the graph is increasing if the base is positive number if the base is positive the graph increase but if the base is a negative number the graph decrease right we try it with many different graph like they all look like this one and passing the point one zero and what's the domain? So the domain, since the graph always stay on the right side of the coordinate plane, so the domain of all of, no matter is increasing or decreasing, the domain of all the logarithm function is what? X greater than zero and all the positive number. So what would be the range? By the graph, you can tell they can go as high as they want and go as low as they want. So that means the range of the logarithm function is all real numbers. That is from negative infinity to infinity. Okay. So now, if I'm giving you, I want you, I, I ask you, hey, um, how do you find the domain of this logarithm function?
So remember how do we find domain when it comes to a rational function? If it's a rational function, I'm going to do a recall very quick. 1 over 3x plus 2 fx. What would be the domain? It should be any number except for we don't want the bottom what equals to 0. So it should be everything but the bottom equals to 0. Another thing is a square root of function. If this is a square root of 3x minus 8 fx, what would be the domain? So since in the square root, right, everything under the square root should be greater than or equals to 0. And then we solve for x. So in here, the idea is very sim similar. When it comes to the logarithm function, we know that hey, we want to keep everything stay on the right side. But there's an asymptote y equals to 0. What is the asymptote? How do we define asymptote? Asymptote means the function cannot touch that point. So that means we want the highlighted part 5 minus 2s greater than 0 because we want the whole function to stay on the right. And now we solve for x we have x is less than 4 half. So that means the domain of the function is negative infinity to 5 half. Okay, that's it for today. Let me know if you have other questions.